Eddie Hearn and Frank Smith are synonymous with boxing on a global scale. As chairman of Matram Sport and CEO of Matram Boxing, respectively, they are at the helm of one of the world's most successful sports promotion agencies and are responsible for promoting some of the biggest fights in recent years, including Joshua versus Klitschko, Joshua versus Usyk, and Canelo versus Saunders. Dana White, president of UFC, once famously said he would never allow a woman to fight in the octagon. Thankfully, Hearn had more respect and a better vision for women stepping into the ring. At a time when other promoters failed to get behind women's boxing, Hearn was unequivocal in his interest in working with Katie Taylor, who turned pro in 2016. He has been instrumental in transforming the sport for women, bringing it, rightly, into the mainstream. Matram was behind the Taylor versus Serrano fight in Madison Square Gardens in April this year. Arguably, one of the greatest fights in boxing history. In this podcast episode, we chat about all things boxing, business, and how these two heavyweights in the world of boxing promotion really get on. Ladies and gentlemen, we are thrilled to be in conversation with Eddie Hearn and Frank Smith. And of course, your host for this evening, me. Hello, you guys. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Frank. Thanks for coming to chat to me for In Conversation with at Rockwater this evening. I'm actually quite terrified. I don't know why. Both staring at me. <laughs> Don't be. We're going to have some fun tonight. We are going to have some fun tonight. Um, so I wanted to start kind of at the beginning of you guys meeting. So you met at a party in Essex. You were 14. Yeah, stoned. Stoned. Yeah, stoned. No, not stoned. Stone. <laughs> Steady. Okay. Okay. It wasn't, no, that, it wasn't we that kind of party. Good start. No, whilst yeah. we're, we're at the beginning, yeah, no, okay, we won't start talking about drugs yet. <laughs> no, Who's taken, no. nearly got that in too quickly, Emily, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Um, yeah, go on. So you were 14. We, we were at, was it Walthamstow Dog Romford, Track or Romford? Romford, Romford. Dog Track. I mean, as the story, you have to understand, I'm a promoter. Yeah. So as the story ages, it gets better and better. So Fantastic. I'll, yeah, I'll tell the real one. Okay. You know, no, no, no. Oh, no, I, I want the better I'm, one. I'm the honest one. So I'll just say yeah. the same story every time. And he just creates this whole... How boring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who wants to know a true story? So, it's right, be, uh, let's quickly then. You tell me the honest version and then you tell me the um, flamboyant... Okay. Why would we'll you okay. see? Okay. We were at Romford Dog, yeah. dog uh, Greyhound uh, Racing. I was selling raffle tickets... This guy bought 20 quid. My stepdad says he's the bloke with the Bentley outside. And I said, the tight bastard only gave me 20 quid. So I went back up to him, asked him for 50 quid, uh, asked him for a job, and the rest is history. That's a very simple... See, that's, that's why that's, I'm okay. the promoter. He's the, <laughs> he's right the brains. Right, so let me tell you what really happened. Yeah, now you tell me. So we were at this party. There were celebrities everywhere. There was Cindy Crawford, <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. It was the first time they'd seen these people down Romford Dog Track. It was amazing. Yeah. We were all and there. Barry Hearn's son yeah, was and, there. Yeah, and we were all there, and all of a sudden, this guy's come over to me, he's pushed past me. He's barged me out of the way. I've turned around, we've had this big fight. I've knocked seven people out. It was unbelievable. <laughs> you should have seen it. Uh, and then all of a sudden, this chubby little kid came over to me, and he said, oh, are you, mate? Can you buy some raffle tickets? And I said, yeah, yeah, what, mate? And he went, oh, come on. So I said, all right, gave him 20 quid. Is that all? I was like, cheeky bastard. Anyway, <laughs> went off, came back five minutes later. He said... Is that your Bentley outside? I said, yeah. He said, why'd you only give me 20 quid for? Come on, it's for charity. Very like, good. Wow. So after I gave him a slap, yeah, I said right. to him, uh, no. So I gave him another 20 quid anyway. It's just like little moments like that sort of sit in your mind, you know. Yeah, you totally. Thought, yeah, just think, no, I like, you know, I like things like that. He was, he was persistent. And as time went on, a couple of weeks later, I received an email just yeah. to say, um, you may or may not remember, but I saw you at the dog track recently and uh, asked you for some money. You were very tight and, you know, tried to make a joke, which, you know, didn't work the second time. <laughs> and I would like to come to Matrim and do some work experience if you've got any placements during the summer. And we don't really, you know, make a, a big um, 
sort of thing of, of, of work experience through summer times. But I just thought I liked him, you know, and I, yeah. like, I liked his tenacity. Yeah. And uh, so, his cheekiness. And so I saw did you a bit look of that. At, did, you, did you do a bit of research? I didn't have a clue who he was. You did? Hon- honestly, I promise. You didn't have I a clue. I just saw so a Bentley didn't... outside. I was like impressed by money at that point. And he, they said he had a Bentley, he was young. So, so you like... didn't have a little look into Matchroom or, no. or Eddie? No. But you, you should have seen Bentley him, right? So he had dollars. You should have seen the haircut, right? Yeah, I used I mean. to call him poor man's Justin Bieber because it was like draped across like half of his face. You can do the research, actually. I think it's online somewhere. Go and have a look at it. It's so funny. He's come a long way, actually. Did and, you um, hold your head in position so that the wind wouldn't blow it? Because that's yeah. what, yeah. It's terrible yeah. down here. No, it's bad, yeah. Yeah. So he, um, I thought, yeah, we'll do that. And we were doing a lot of televised poker at the time. I was yeah. producing all the televised poker at, at big shows around the world. And Frank came on as really like a runner for the yeah. poker players. So his job was to basically just entertain the poker players who are right characters. I mean, you got I mean, these guys are buying him for $500,000 to sit down in one of our tournaments. They're characters. They're turning up. You've got... Phil Helmuth, you've got Devil Fish, you know, you've yeah. got all these characters. Most of them are trying to blag you, rob you, whatever they want to do to get into the game to play, and then they'll pay you later. And but they took a shine to him because he would go out and he would get their pizzas while they were sitting in the green room, and they'd, yeah. they've got cash everywhere. So that he'd bring the pizzas back and it'd be like fifty quid, fifty quid. He couldn't believe it, and but he was putting himself about. Um, and just you confident. just you just watch confident. those you, you just watch confident. you watch those people you know you think he's a he's a good kid yeah. you know and but he was young 14 15 you know and um he it's then really finished the work experience and i think i can't remember how long later a few months or whatever it was later said wrote me an email and said look uh, i think Everybody loved him. You know, I don't want to give him a big head, but everybody on, on the team, all the players, everybody, he was a grafter. And he said, look, thanks for the work experience. I've finished my GCSEs. I'd like to come and get a job and I'd love to work for Matrim. Yeah. What do you think? And I just went back and said, look, you're too young. You're 15, 16. I said, go and do your A-levels and then we'll talk. And he wrote straight back and he said, I, I respect your opinion, but I've made my decision. I'm going into work. So whether it's with you or without you, I'm doing it. So just letting you know. It's brilliant. And I thought, cheeky bastard. Again, and I thought, I thought, okay. So we got him in and, and we gave him a job. £10,000 a year at 16. Wow. And, um, I'm 15 now. <laughs> it's going well. It's yeah, going it's well. taken He 20, sold me a yeah. dream. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it is a really, really inspirational story because it just shows that you don't, it's not all about qualifications. I don't, if you've got tenacity honestly, and work ethic. Honestly, I don't ethic. think, uh, of course, as an, an employ, employer, yeah. when you recruit people, for me anyway, everybody's different. For me, I know within the first minute of yeah. meeting someone, probably earlier, if I'm going to give that person a job. Yeah, totally. Honestly, and, and the qualifications comes from someone that, my qualifications were fairly average. And a lot of the people that I know that are successful also have uh, average, average. qualifications. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you don't want a bright and intellectual individual, but at the same time, no. mindset, you know, like you said earlier, tenacity, the will work to win, ethics. work ethics, all these things that, that you know, make you, and, and the connection, because we like to have fun. Yeah. And I don't want to be in a team of people that we don't engage with, we don't have fun with, don't share the same passions. And Frank showed me during the work experience times, particularly, yeah. that he was prepared to put the work in. The most impressive thing about him is, and you can't feel sorry for him because he's had a fantastic life, but he sacrificed yeah. his younger years to be successful. So rather than going out, I mean, he, we would go out all the time, us and we'd be in New York. His lifestyle was unbelievable. Yeah. But he he didn't have any friends and he still hasn't got any friends um, apart from me really <laughs> and actually pretty much is the same with him so but that that's the difference yeah. because if you really want something you've got to dedicate your life to it and and the, the commitment all round whatever level you work at what the industry you work yeah, at yeah it's true they're, they're, you know it's one or the other and they're quite rare to come by someone that's willing to make that commitment and again lived, lived an amazing exciting life but missed out on you know, the, the 17, 18, 19, you know, 20, 21 years of going out with your mates and to the pub and, you know, that kind of stuff. I had a great Taking social drugs life. drugs and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, no, boring. We you know were just I mean? discussing yeah. this. Up, well, none of us have ever <laughs> yeah. taken drugs. But that's that's the sacrifice he made. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah, it's an amazing story. That, and now you're the CEO of the Matchroom Boxing and you're not even 30 yet. Oh, he is. 30 now. 
Were you on? Yeah. This year. Yeah. This year. Are you 30 or are you about to I was 30, 30 this year. You were 30, you this are year, now yeah. 30. 30 now. He's definitely Less impressive 30. now. Less so how did, you, how did you come to be on the boxing side? Uh, to be honest, I worked across everything. So I started with poker when we, yeah. when we were in poker. Then was at Leighton Orient. I used to go around in the mascots outfit at the office. They didn't really have much work for me to actually do. <laughs> so I used to sit in the office flicking poker chips and learning how to deal cards. Um, so that, that's where it started. Snooker, did a bit in darts. Just used to like get involved in bits and pieces. And then boxing, Eddie got back involved in 12 years ago and just followed through. I've, I'm not really a massive boxer, as bad, bad as it sounds. I wasn't a massive boxing fan. I yeah. just fell into it and liked putting on events and shows and that was really my focus. And it would have been the same whatever sport I went into, but obviously boxing was the focus of the business at the time. So started in that, worked through all the levels of everything we do. Um, and you when know, you talk about like, um, you know, putting on a show, the event, the boxing, because you have really brought glamour to boxing and and more of an occasion of it is what I can see. And there, there's a show and there's also um, a backstory on the boxers so people can feel more invested. And um, it's, you know, a really exciting thing to watch now. You feel that you know the guy, you know, the boxers that come out. And I, am I correct that you brought in the boxers walk out to their own songs? Yeah, I mean, that's always been a thing, but we emphasise that. I mean, when, yeah. when we returned to boxing about 12, 13 years ago, yeah. it was me, Frank, and a, an old gentleman who used to work for my dad called John Wishhausen. Yeah. And there was three of us. And we did everything. You know, I mean, Frank's self-taught, really. So am I in, in the industry. I've been yeah. around it all my life. But we would do the TV contracts, the venue contracts, the fighter contracts, sponsorship, the posters, social media. We'd be tweeting us. You know, it, it was only three of us. So that's how you really cut your cloth. Yeah. So Frank would be selling international TV rights at 19. Absolutely no idea what he was doing. But, you know, next thing he's done a deal in Turkey. And, you know, they're showing the fight live and it's $30,000 here and, and the contract comes in. And, but that's, that's how you learn. Yeah. And, the, you know, when you talk about the walkouts and the events, everything's about perception yeah. in life. You know, and, and ultimately when you tune in, what you see will give you that immediate impact about how big and how important this event is. When we w returned to boxing, boxing was dead. They were doing boxing in leisure centres in Wigan. Nothing wrong with Wigan. It's a nice place. No, a bit colder than Hove at the moment. <laughs> but there would be basketball rings in the background and there'd be 200 people there and 300 empty seats. Straight away as a, as a viewer, you tune in and say, this is not a big event. This is not exciting. No. Now, you know, and, and the, the emphasis has been on the event, the ring walks, the music, the production, the screens, you know, and when people go out for a night out, they want to go and experience that. The narrative that you talk about is so important to building fighter profiles and the story of a fighter. Absolutely. It's easier to do with some fighters than others. Obviously, Anthony Joshua, probably the best example of that. Yeah. You know, one Olympic gold in London, looks a million dollars, oh, talks yeah. well, great fighter. You know, that, that's an easy story to sell. Yeah. But ultimately you have to get the, the consumer, the viewer, the fan invested in the story of the fighter. And we decided 12 years ago to change boxing, bring it back into the big arenas, bring back production, invest in the production. Yeah. Invest. And that's Frank. I mean, Frank spends a fortune. I mean, we've got, what, 50 staff now? Something yeah, like that. Every time I bring a new person in. Oh, my in. God. I'm like, who's Not that? another person. I said, who's that? Oh, he's, he's working on digital and social media. I said, but you brought three in last week to do that. Yeah, so, you know, I'm saying, Don't yeah. trust me. I know, well, I do. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just say, you, you carry on. Because you know. I found it really interesting. Um, I also was lucky enough to chat to Tony Bellew. Um, oh, I can't remember, like six weeks ago. And then when he was talking about it, it made me just think about it in a different way. As, as you say, Anthony Joshua is kind of, you know, easier to sell than some. Is it really important that, er that everybody is good at being the face of themselves, you know what I mean? Or do some boxers you, really struggle at that? You, yeah, or I think... To put bums on seats... Not is, everyone's is, a character or a no, personality, but you, you, have to, you have to build off what they are. Yeah. And that's what my dad did so well in snooker. Yeah. I mean, famously, Steve Davis, you know, they, yeah. they got everybody a nickname and they got to Steve Davis and they thought, oh, you're so boring. I'd, what? <laughs> and he said, I'm going to call you interesting, right? And he was like, why? I'm not interested. And he went, Exactly. 
right? right and he okay. was Steve Interesting Davis. And that yes. was the story. You are six foot two, skinny, ginger, and boring. Okay. And that's you. But and it's better to be you. you what are you going to do to Steve Davis? Start, you know, dyeing his hair and putting a leather jacket on him, no. going out, you know. You've got to be yourself. That's an easier story to tell. Yeah. You know, and I think Tony Bellew is a great example of, yeah. you know, someone that wasn't overly marketable, had a big mouth, scouser, very passionate, very loud. But the Tony Bellew story is really an unbelievable story. Yeah. I mean, this guy was making 15, 20,000 pounds a fight fighting for British and Commonwealth titles. He took a chance with us at a time where we were growing. You know, next thing, somehow we got him a, a world title shot at Everton, which is his football club. Yeah. Won that, you know, defended it, started making six figures and then fought David Hay twice and yeah. Alexander Usyk and made over 10 million pounds in I three know. fights. No one deserves it more, but it's just, that's a good lesson for life to say that if you stay consistent and keep doing the right things, good things will happen for you. Yeah. And if you would have said to him when he made a hundred thousand pounds to fight for the world title, you'll be fighting David Hay for three or four million. Yeah, he'll like, that. you know, but that's, I can't tell you how rewarding that is to see someone's life change like yeah. that. You know, see him in his house now and a house abroad. And, yeah, he told you know, me he actually bought, you know, bought his first house yeah. when he had the fight with David Hay. Yeah, now he's got about 80 of them. Good. But, but that's, you know... but Because I thought, that's bloody hell. That's a lot of hard work. A lot I mean, of hard I mean, work. I mean, I and, and that's that 1% of boxers. Actually, it's not even 1% of boxers. You know, it's... 0.1% of fighters yeah. around the world that get the opportunity to buy their houses, change their life, live comfortably. That's why you've always got to respect these guys um, for yeah. what they do. Yeah. Um, and he, yeah, he, th you know, he had so many lovely things to say about you guys as well. And the fact that you don't have, haven't got, you haven't signed a contract, the oh, two of you. He was, just, I mean, look, you boxing, boxing is a dog business. Yeah. Dog business. You have to sleep with one eye open every night. There's no loyalty at all. Wow. Every now and again, you meet a fighter that is a loyal individual that puts their trust in you. Mm -hmm. That is the greatest experience mm. in, in this sport. There's very few, I can count them on one hand, probably two hands, you know, Anthony Joshua, Tony Bellew, yeah. Katie Taylor, Carl yeah. Froch, Anthony Crawler, Darren Barker, you know, there's, there's more, who you know would never, ever leave you. You know, and Tony Bellew, you know how rewarding it is to say to someone, Tony, I want to sit down with you. We've got this offer. These are the numbers to fight David Hay. Let me run through it with you. He said, Ed, Get me as much money as you can, whatever you say. I mean, yeah. that's the responsibility on you. You would never let someone down in that, in that situation. No. You know, if you're not emotionally invested with someone, if you think that guy, you know, he tried to leave before, he doesn't really like, you know, of course you're going to do your best. But when someone says, you're the guy, you're the man, no one's better than you. Whatever you say, I trust you. Yeah. You know, in that sport, and Joshua was the same, Froch was the same, you know, there, there's few people that would say, you've got my back, I trust you. And, and you know, in life, especially in boxing, yeah, the, they're few and far between. That's a lovely thing to have. And, and Frank has spilled the beans on you previously, Eddie, that you're no stranger to calling and texting him in the middle of the night, maybe 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Do you pick up? Unfortunately, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's maybe the jet lag. We're traveling a lot, yeah. so it's, you just get used to it after a while. Yeah. He, he, if you don't well, reply within about an hour, he texts you again or puts a question mark, so you know, yeah. it gets a bit... And, and what was the night nurse? Somebody take oh, night... I what? love night nurse. You Terrible. love night nurse? Yeah. Terrible. No, because, because of the jet lag. Night oh, nurse okay. is unbelievable, you know. So, okay, you know. I suppose that's gentler than a sleeping tablet. Exactly. That's as hard so don't as it start gets down that. It's available yeah. all good to pharmacists. But doesn't it always start with night nurse? You know, and that's the, it just goes from there, really. Yeah. Day nurse as well. well we say, yeah. <laughs> I think they've taken the stuff out of night nurse that really helps you sleep, haven't they? No, it's banging. Is it's it banging? Unbelievable. Okay, right, good. I just wondered, I heard night nurse, man, yeah. I was like, I didn't quite understand the night nurse. <laughs> so do you ever switch off? Not really. I, I do try. I mean, it's about a year ago I sort of thought to myself, you, the lifestyle is going to get you. So I started trying, you know, I lost quite a bit of weight, started training more. I've had, I don't want to bore people here, but honestly, if you ever get the opportunity, ice baths. Ice I, baths. I, cold, I swim right, in the Honestly. Cold. Do you? There you go. Yeah. Game changer. Game changer. Been a game changer for me, ice baths. Like, I can't... I can't recommend it enough. Put your hands up here if you cold water swim or ice bath. One. Look, look how, look, he's 94. Look how well he looks. Look. <laughs> no, yeah. it is a game. It, it's just, yeah. How it's, often do you do it? Try and do it every day. Well, depending but where he I'm. gets into these fads, right? He was a vegan yeah. for a while and he told, 
he told everyone about it every single day of the week. And we'd be like, I'm vegan now, I'm vegan, I'm vegan. And then one day you go out and he orders a steak and he's like, I'm not vegan anymore, you know. It really, you know. I stopped drinking, but yeah. he still winds me up because I have one every now and again. But there was, that was, I just made a decision about a year ago that, you, you know, you, my dad had a heart attack at 52, he's had a couple. My granddad died at 44. His yeah. dad died at 43 through heart attack. So, you know, I just felt that if I'm going to be at, try and be at the top of the game, yeah. I've got to try and stay healthy because the workload will kill you. Yeah. Because we're going fight to fight to fight to fight every single week around yeah. the world. Wow. So, but it's, an, it's a terrible addiction, but it's the only addiction I've got. So, yeah. and he's addicted. We're, yeah. we're both addicted, but it doesn't seem like work. It doesn't seem like hassle or stress when you're so addicted and you love it and you yeah. just, you know. So for me, waking up at three o'clock in the morning and not being able to see, I try, I turn my phone off now, put it in the drawer, you know, all these things that I've yeah. read. Yeah. And then I, how do you stop? I wake up and I go, where's my phone? You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. no, it's in the drawer. Don't touch it. Okay, don't touch it. If you subscribe to A Fabric of Life, Coloured by the Sea, subscribe to Open Water, from Rockwater for exclusive performances by international recording artists and world-class musicians, celebrity talks and stand-up comedy, to film screenings by firesides, well-being workouts and beach-bound meditation. Open Water gives you exclusive access to the best that Rockwater has to offer. Played out over three floors, just a stone's throw from the water with remarkable food and drink experiences for company. To find out more, contact the team today. Open water at rockwater.uk. Open water, made by the sea. Do you have like a certain amount like, of hours uh, you need to sleep? You know, no, do you, I, I no. sleep when I can. Yeah. You know, and I know that's terrible. But listen, if I, can get, if I can get seven or eight hours, and I'll do it every now and again, but ultimately we're on a plane. We flew back from Phoenix on, on Monday. <clears throat> then we'd get a couple of hours there, then here, and try and take a few sleeps in the day. But, you know, it's it, the sleep is the main thing that I've got to work on. But he's good on his phone. Like, you know, the WhatsApp thing. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit something about WhatsApp, which I've just found out. You're going to love this. It's going to be the best bit of the whole speech that you're going to take home. Do you know that on WhatsApp, you can, I shouldn't really say this, cut this bit out of the recording. You can remove the online bit. Do you know that? Yeah. Oh, all right. Then. <laughs> Revolution. I'm not really under. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you know, you've got the one thing where it's like last scene. Yeah, yeah. So yes. the blue tick, right? So oh, you what, can, you can turn off when people see if you're online or not? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that is quite cool. <laughs> it is. It is, yeah. It means how? you can leave me alone for a bit. At all, but how, yeah, yeah. How? No, I can't tell you that. It's... Okay. Uh, okay. In you go place. to settings, you go to privacy, and then there's this new bit. It says, La see when you're online, everybody, or same as last seen. Same as last seen. He's got it. Look, the boy down there, look, he's over the moon. Okay, you're doing it now. He's actually doing it now on his WhatsApp. Done. Thank you. Done. Okay. Thank you for that That's bit right. of advice. I'll do that later. It's because, like, you know when you get a message from someone you don't want to reply to, and you're online? Yes. Yeah? So you look at it, and they go, so and so, and you go, oh, and just get rid of it straight away, because you don't want to be online. Because yeah. now you've got rid of last seen so they, and the blue ticks, so they don't know whether you've received the message. But if you're online, it's very likely you've received the message. Yeah. So the, now you can read the message and they don't even know you're online. That's amazing. Oh, it made my year, it did. Yeah, so We have not... a laugh, I tell you. <laughs> so crazy. I think we might keep that in there. It might be quite helpful. So I'd also like to, can, I, can we speak about your working relationship? By that, I mean, Eddie, you're the chairman of Matram and Frank, you're the CEO of Matram Boxing. So what I mean is on a day-to-day -day basis, who's responsible for what? Well, I talk about it all yeah. over the world and basically he listens and goes, oh, for fuck's sake. And then he does it all. That's basically how it works. So, okay. you know. You're like, no, no. Yeah, this, no. this guy puts together basically. everything. Everything. Wow. Yeah, he's the brains. He's the brains on the mouth, genuinely. But yeah. he also tries to get involved sometimes. He's just like, just leave us but alone. He's quite arrogant. Yeah. You know, like you come up, you, I like to think that I've got some good ideas. He makes yes. me feel like I'm, he makes me feel like probably I make my dad feel. 
You know, like yeah. my dad will come into the office and go, oh, I'll tell you what, son, I'll see that Twitter. That's good, that, isn't it? That Twitter. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, dad's been quite good for us. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? We, do, we use that, do we? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He's like that with me. You know, I say, you know what we want to do? We want to dig. All right. Like, almost like, yeah. It's quite condescending. No, but you actually. read something on Twitter from like a troll and then come in the office and go, they've all been saying this about, about us. And it's like, it's one person on Twitter who hasn't even got a picture, who's got a picture of an egg. And then you take it as Bible. It's like, well, we got we got to do God, you got to listen to the fans. <laughs> but, um, so you listen and you talk and then you go, oh my God, how the hell am yeah, I going to so pull that off? No, but I watch his interviews and go, he's not supposed to say that. Like, yeah. he, can't, he can't withhold information. So if someone would tell you something, you'd be like, look, Someone's told me this. It's really interesting, but don't say anything. It'll go and do an iFilm London interview. It'll be on there. And then someone will ring you and be like, I told you not to tell anyone. I went, I didn't tell anyone. Eddie's just spoken about it in an interview. You're the only person who knows. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be saying to me, I'll do an interview. How many tickets have you sold? How many tickets have you sold, Frank? 6,000. 12,000. Uh, unbelievable crowd on Saturday night, you know. <laughs> and he's, he's like, oh. Yeah, he's very honest. Or we sit in meetings and he goes, I mean, what's the number for that, Frank, like that? And he's looking at me and I'm thinking, what does he want me to yeah. fucking say? Yeah. <laughs> I always say that. We're in a meeting, so I mean, Frank, how many, you know, listen, son, you're, not, you're just not selling tickets. Frank, how many tickets did we sell for that show? And he's going, do I tell him the truth? Or yeah. do I, he's like, he's looking at the eye contact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> up or down. <laughs> up, or, up or down. Up or down. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, by the way, if I ever ask you that, yeah. just be honest. Because I won't ask oh, you because right. I know you're too honest. I know you're not going to lie. So just say it, it's fine. Because I've already played that in my mind. Okay. Yeah, mm. that's good. So we're kind of halfway there. I was going to say, so Frank, what's the most annoying thing Eddie does? Is that it? Or he's, is there something no, else? No, he still we... get he still gets involved in things. Like we've got Oh sorry. Dis- no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Unbelievable. But Family we... legacy through 40 <laughs> years. It's only my life. How dare I get involved in these things? <laughs> no, but we've got like a team of designers, right? Yeah. And they 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 get paid to design things, and he goes, nah shit, my seven-year-old could have done that. <laughs> and it's like but it's just your opinion. And he's like, but you've got, you're quite opinionated. Oh, yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, sorry, I mean, again. That's the, he's the, great, the, the thing that really he's great up, apart, my attention he's great. span is so bad. Yeah. So he'll sit down and go, now, can you give me two minutes? I'm like, yeah, no problem. Anyway, I know what he's going to say anyway. I've taught him, right? <laughs> so anyway, get to like a minute in and I'm like, oh God, I knew this And he's coming. watching a video of a dog on Twitter yeah, or something. So then, like, so, <laughs> so then the phone comes out and I'm like, so just, no, oh, this is bloke saying about a show on Saturday. He's like, well, it's been a minute, you know, but he doesn't realise. No, that. but we're trying to do massive deals, right? Yeah, but I'm level all around the, I'm all around front, the world, and right? It's not I'm steps no, but, ahead. No, but I'm so just, I know I'll catch up with this in ten minutes. And I've already told him what he was going to say anyway. Yeah, but I'm just going. Just give me ten minutes just to listen to this one thing, and he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's on Instagram. He's or, not or he listening. He just picks up the phone and he goes, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I've got to go now. And you're like, ten minutes? Yeah, because I trust him. I know he's going to make the right decision. It's fine. Which is nice to hear, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What's the work most annoying thing about me? Yeah. You're very condescending. You are. Late, <laughs> la- lately, I've really noticed it. You have no regard for my opinion. <laughs> and I'm actually getting quite pissed off. It's the first time I brought this up. But I've actually noticed it lately. It's like you a know, therapy it session. Is, it is. It really is. So it's how like, can we work this no, out, but it's like, guys? And when I feel passionately about something, and I go, yeah, no, I think we should... <laughs> no, no. No, 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 it yeah, doesn't Because you work. give no, no thought no, about no, how no, it actually let me finish, gets Because he's not therapy if you're going to butt in. <laughs> yeah. Right? Give oh, him his moment. Oh, oh, no, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. No, no, no. No, 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 it fucking is going to work. Because I'm telling you it's going to No, 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 You know, like that. Like, go back to your Instagram. That's his thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just, now that, he wants you to look at Twitter. Well, oh, because he grew up like, oh, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> and now and he's gone. like, Eddie... You go and retire or something like that, you know. Yeah. That's how it's gone. I'm only 43. I know. Spring chicken. Yeah, only 43. You missed the stone bit. You and you, ne- you nearly lost your job in the early days, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell the honest story. I'll tell right, well, let's do this again, okay? okay? Let's have your honest story and then yours. Okay. Because I like this. I, I think I was... I was 16 and I'd been working for two months. We were at Maidstone Studios and we were doing a poker tournament and I I got into like, everyone was out drinking. I wasn't drinking 16, obviously. I was dealing the cards for the poker tournament afterwards in the hotel. It was a poker tournament. (laughs) And that... Started off, I I wasn't drinking, I was dealing. 
<laughs> no. I was like, again, we weren't that sort of company. No, no, no. All right, this was after hours, though. This was after hours. Uh, and then I was staying in a room with someone, with a guy, Emily, before, and I didn't even know you then. So, um, so scared. Yeah. But I was staying in a room with someone. I went to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. And at 8 a.m., it was actually our CFO's son, right? So he was like, he could do whatever he wanted. Get him, he wouldn't get in any trouble. But at 8 a.m., the alarm started going off. But he thought it was people pranking the room because he'd only got in two hours before. So he unplugged all the phones and went, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine, just go back to sleep. I woke up at 10 a.m. and I started crying because I looked at my phone and I thought, it's over. I've been here two months. And... I rang, I, he, I had eight missed calls off him. He was like, where were you? He was quite involved at the time, for some reason. He was, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he was like, where are you? Where are you? And I thought, I was crying down the phone to him. So I turned up and I think I was, I don't know, I was two hours late and they gave me this job and I was sitting in, in the studio when, when they're playing the poker. You're in like this gantry and you're logging the cards. So there's 10 players and you're like just sitting there, click, it's the most dull, boring thing ever. Sorry. And he, He's 15. Yeah. <laughs> you sold me a dream. Yeah, know, and then, yeah, and then yeah. you put me in this TV studio. <laughs> and then he walked in behind me with this letter and he just like, he just like plopped it on the desk like that. And he was right arrogant back then as well. And, back then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I opened it and I just burst out crying. Like, it's so embarrassing. But I thought it was over. He said it was my final warning. Called my mum. She was she was devastated. She she didn't want to know me. She was like, "You had this one chance, and you've messed it up on after two months." So that's my story in there at your time. It's quite close. Um, yeah. The, there were a lot of tears. Yeah. I thought you cheeky fucker. Yeah. Right. Because he's. I've. You got to remember when I decided to give him a job. Everyone said to me, "No." He's 15, he's 16. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, I said, look, I think we should just give him an opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you like So him. I put my nuts on the line. I put him into the poker job. Next thing, it's like a month in or whatever it was, <laughs> he hasn't turned up for work. No. Everyone's phoning me saying, you know, where's this kid that you, you know, you told me, you know, this is not. So I wrote, got the, the office to type out a letter saying, this is your final warning. One more and you go. And I went in and I said, you fucking have that, you little shit. Yeah. And I gave it to him and he went, huh. <laughs> <laughs> looked up at me and I thought, oh, pull yourself together. And he's never made one mistake since. So it worked. Yeah. You know, but there's still... I have made a few mistakes. You just... Not, just missed not sackable offences. Not... No. Not like that. That was like... Does the final warning learn. still stand? Absolutely. Fine. <laughs> it doesn't go away, does it? Didn't say, this is your final warning, it expires on X, does it? Should do, really. It's not like a speeding offence. Also, I'm sure no. you can't go straight to final warning. No. What? Any HR? Three. Yeah. So, three yeah, we, need to have a we need to have three. a chat about so that. So, you got three offences before you have a final warning. But what, was this the case 15 years ago? Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sure you did a couple of other things as well. we'll yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll move on from that one. Ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this one? Oh, what's this one? Oh, Anthony Joshua, later. Tyson Fury. Yeah, um, what's that one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I've also I've watched the um, video of you two sparring sparring earlier yeah. this year. It went well, didn't it? It went really well. Mm. <clears throat> Who's the better fighter? Obviously him. You think? I'm soft. Well, he was, I don't he was, the height difference. He, he no, but that's the problem. Fair. My dad phoned me yeah. after, and he said, "What are you doing?" I was like, what? He went, like, bullying Frank Smith. And ev what happens is, yeah. we're away, we were in San Diego, weren't we? There was a yeah. ring set up, and Seba, he's always giving it a big one. Oh, we do a bit of sparring. No, 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 sorry, I'm just going to stop you there. You went to me, oh, you've been on this, like, this ice bath thing, getting fit and all that. You went, let's do a few rounds moving about. It'll be really good, mate. Like that. Who told and, I went, that? and I went, <laughs> I went, I went, yeah. I went, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. You know, we'll just get in there, just move about. And, you know, like, go it really soft on me. Bear in mind, you're about six foot seven and about <laughs> no. 24 pounds heavier than me. No. Well, back, I'll get back, back then to, you were. Okay, we'll back go then you were. true story. And you got in there and you just, you just literally beat the shit out of me. No. Okay. Which company would you ever see a chairman <laughs> knock out a CEO? That's on very camera. different. No, but, but we took a load of YouTube revenue, so it was all yeah. right. <laughs> Look, the actual story is what yeah. people don't realise is. So now are, you're telling the truth. This is actually the truth. Yeah. We're very similar in weight. The problem is, I'm six foot five, he's five foot three, right? 
So it looks terrible. My dad phoned me out. He went, are you doing bullying Frank? I said, not bullying Frank. We go in there and he's like giving it the big one, like letting his hands go. <laughs> he's got a top knot in. He had his hair was a bit longer. I know. Top knot, big belly out here with some tight Nike top on, like, you know, the Nike Pro. Like, look like, what's that daffid uh, out of Little Britain? Do you know? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look like that. Oh, Frank, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then he started attacking me. Why did you bring it up? I don't know. I started, he started attacking, attacking, attacking you. attacking me. So I broke my finger. It's still broken. And I dropped him with a body shot. In the shot. sparring, you yeah. broke your finger. In like the second round, we did he like... He broke my rib. Yeah, dis- yeah. And that was hard. So don't worry about his finger. He broke your rib. No, actually, Luke yeah. broke it first and then he broke it. Yeah. So. yeah. Did you spar Luke? Yeah. He's now, he's much bigger than me. He actually said in like the third round, he went... Because by now, there was loads of people watching. And yeah. all the YouTube outlets were filming it. So now it was getting quite serious. Yeah. And he's gone to me in the third round. He's like, Ed... I think I've broken my rib. And I'm like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it, mate. Okay, which one? It's oh, this side. This is like in a clinic. Like, no worries. Fucking have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with the, with the tough upbringing he had, yeah, I mean, you know, yes. I'm so, I'm really soft, but oh, he's, very t- he's a tough guy with the upbringing this he's guy, had. You know? yeah. He's like, oh, the tough upbringing you had, oh, in your mansion in Brentwood. I'm like, mate. You lived in Felsted. I lived in like, Chadwell Heath. Well, no, but my dad lived in Chadwell Heath. I was like, I used to pick him up at a nice house. He makes out like yeah. this rags to riches story. Yeah, right? but it's great for the story, isn't it? It's great for Actually, the... Actually, right. Make, it was yeah. unbelievable. He didn't even have shoes when I met him. No. I say, you should have seen him. <laughs> and, I, and also, a really important question, and I, I haven't heard any other interviewers pick up on this, but I also watched Fight Club Karaoke. Mm, Who's the better good. singer? Him. He's actually quite a good You singer. are quite good, yeah. actually. God. Worryingly, he's yeah. good at a lot of things. Yeah. Like, as in, annoying. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's really annoying. Do you know what I mean? What, what? Yeah. Huh? Like what? No, you're good at singing, you're good at talking, you can you know, sell sand. To well, great. So, you, all the these beach. things singing, talking, <laughs> basically anything involving opening my mouth <laughs> yeah. is about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He can't sing, but he's. How he hasn't been polaxed in the street or he's got to remember what Frank has got I've got to say this this is probably your biggest quality he's got tremendous energy right yeah. also can be confused with extremely annoying right but we're in the airport and we're walking like from gate to gate and he's going up to people going morning hi how are you <laughs> good morning welcome to United Airlines we're here to help today and I'm, like, and I'm thinking soon someone's going to whack you this yeah. has been going on for 15 years around the world and he hasn't been chinned yet. But I'm quite likeable. I think it's because I'm quite likeable. <laughs> Do you know what, though? Morning and then spins around and goes, yeah, to people. <laughs> but, Whoa. And some of them, no, he goes, high five, like to a stranger. I love like, that. Morning, high and five. And then I couldn't be more corporate like, on the other end. Yeah. So, like, really serious. But I think it's because I've been so serious for so long that I have to have that side of me. That yeah, just like escapes. But also, God, your you ego's say, out of control but, now. But also, you did say she's going to start talking in the third person. I mean, so it's a matter of time. That it's a how energy. Actually, I put a post up today saying bring energy is so important. Oh, if so you're going to do something, give it your all and give it energy. But being you know energy, being around people with bad energy is a disaster. It's bad. It's impossible for you. That's why you know. Genuinely, travelling with Frank, it is, it is, it's amusing and, and you, you're having a laugh. Yeah. Anthony Joshua, these people, you're in a room and you feel alive. And, yeah. and there's so much about the circle you keep, you know, in terms of what you achieve and the life you did, live. It's, it's, it's paramount to, yeah. to yeah. your own energy and it, it changes everything. That's why the people that work with us, you know, we, we don't want miserable people. We want people that enjoy their work, that are driven, that have the opportunity to work through the business. And actually, you know, as a someone who owns a business, how do you get that same commitment? That's why Frank's quite unique. It's not his company. Well, he's got a piece of it now and probably have more and more as the years go on. But yeah. that doesn't matter. When, when he started, he had that same investment from him, of energy and emotion that he would if he was owning the business. And that's very difficult to get out of people. And you do that by motivating people, looking after them, paying them well, but giving them the opportunity and the responsibility to move through the business. It's only now because of our size, we're having to recruit at a senior level. We've never done it. Frank started at 15. Matthew Paltrow, CEO, runs the Professional Darts Corporation, joined at 17. Emily Fraser runs Multisport. She joined at 17. 
these are all people that have moved through the business. Yeah. So they adore it. Yeah, but you, there's few and far between. It's it, like I said, it's that you have to make that commitment and investment yourself. Yeah. But to do, to have pride in a business that is not actually yours, it's very easy if, if you're a business owner. Yeah. To put the hours in, to have have the you know to have sleepless nights, to work all hours, to have that emotional investment, to make sacrifices. But how do you get your team? Mm-hmm. to do that and, and make that investment themselves. And that's, that, that, that's difficult to, to achieve as an, as an employer. Yeah, it is. But it's, I mean, I think you're kind of showing it tonight, to be honest, that if you have got someone good, you tell them how much you appreciate them. You start bringing you them are. on tour with you as well. Yeah, start bringing them yeah. on tour with you. I loved speaking to these two, a genuinely funny and authentic pairing. It was a pleasure speaking with Eddie and Frank about their passion for boxing and business, as well as hearing the secrets and stories of their enduring partnership. Don't forget to let us know what you thought by rating and reviewing, and make sure to keep an eye out for our up and coming episodes. We've got some good ones.